All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, I had this client come in this week and I thought it was kind of interesting. So I, th I wanted to do this quick little video about it. And this is a really good example of what can happen if you have too long of cranks that you have on your bike. And especially what happens when you ride these for a long time. There's some interesting adaptations that can occur. So I want you to, let's watch her pedal for just a second here. We're running at half speed. And just just watching for a minute. I want you to pay a specific attention to how the foot and the ankle moves through the top of the pedal stroke. Okay, let's go back here. Now, normally when we're pedaling through the top of the pedal stroke, we expect, especially on this backside here, we expect a couple of things. One, usually there's a lot of toe down. Just like I'll show you in these, in a couple of these other clients that I'll show you here real briefly, you can see a lot of a lot of toe down. But what you also notice is that the ankle is usually more open than what this client is displaying. So let's take a look. So on the back side here, you saw in those other foot position, their ankle the foot position, excuse me, at this point was was much more than this, much more than the you know mid to high twenties uh, for pretty much all of them. But in addition to this, I want to take a look. Look at how closed the ankle is. Okay, we're at about, if I adjust this properly, I need this up a little bit more. We're in the, certainly in the low 70s, you know, probably for her ankle position. And if we go forward into the pedal stroke, we can watch and see at the top of the pedal stroke. And again, this is, I'm just gonna get rid of that. This is where we usually see about 25 to about maybe 35 or even 40 degrees of toe down or, or foot down posture. And geez, we're, we're in the low teens here, or in the mid teens, excuse me, uh, for this client. So what is going on here? What's this the result of? So clearly this client has a lot more ankle dorsiflexion, which measures this, basically the angle of the foot. Um, and how much the toes are pulled up or pointed down uh, relative to the shin. We also have, with her, we have more of a flatter foot posture. And yet these are, these are two different but related measurements. So this flatter foot posture here, where she's at the top of the pedal stroke, this really carries over into the pedal stroke, into, into the power phase. If we look, we go forward and look at where she is at about three o'clock, which is about there. She's actually in a negative angle. She actually is about negative, about 10, almost 10 degrees. When I measured a few, I measured a few different ones earlier, but about nine to 11 degrees of heel down. And so this very flat foot posture through the back of the stroke is carrying through into the, uh, into the fore, uh, front of the stroke as well, into the power phase. And this is also remarkable for her because she had her cleats very, very far forward on the shoe which usually in, in almost all aspects of the pedal stroke in all, in all points would make you toe down or, or, or foot down more, but it just was not the case for her. One of the questions is why does she have so much ankle dorsiflexion here? What is this a result of? Why is she doing this so much through the top of the pedal stroke? Why are we at this roughly you know 70 degree angle? And for her, it's because she is avoiding trying to move too much into into hip flexion she's trying to minimize this angle here she doesn't want this angle to close any further because if she were to bring this ankle up into a into a toe down posture like that in a more aggressive toe down posture let's say that is actually then going to that would take her knee from where it is it would raise it up and move her into more hip flexion and she's doing this in part, she does have some hip limitations. And you combine that with the fact that she's actually running 175 millimeter cranks. 175 millimeter cranks on a mountain bike are not extraordinary, but that's definitely a bit long for her. And clearly for her mechanics, it's, it's, it is too much. So she is someone that's going to really benefit from a shorter crank on there, even moving down to 170s. But I think for her, uh, perhaps we might try her actually with 165s even. 
So now when we make that change, this is the interesting thing is it is not, not everything is just going to be perfect and, and working a hundred percent right off the bat. It's going to take some time for her to adapt. And the reason it'll take her a little time to adapt is because our ankles are, are very slow to make changes. And so she, we may put her on shorter cranks and of course we'll have to adjust her seat height for this and perhaps even the bar height just to equalize things. But when we do it, it'll take the foot and the ankle a while to settle into their new sort of uh, mechanics and for them to change a little bit so that she does start to toe down a bit more. And she does open up that angle, uh, ankle, excuse me, especially at the top of the pedal stroke. Ankles are very slow adapters, as I've mentioned. They tend to take quite a bit of time and a few, you know, more than just a couple of rides in order to uh, sort of find their new position. The hips, as I've mentioned in the past, are not. This is actually her before and after where we made a, made a few changes. You can see the before here, uh, she's bearing more weight on the right side. Most of her motion is to this right side. She has a little fore pressure here on the right as well. And we made a couple of little changes and actually we pretty much everything flipped. Now her motion is more to the left. She's bearing more weight on the left side and has a little fore pressure on the left side. So the the hips and the and the set and the uh, and on the saddle are going to be very quick adapters, but the uh, but the feet and the ankles are very slow, and so it's going to take you know probably a half a dozen to a dozen rides with the new cranks and all the new you know position changes we're going to make like moving the cleats and adjusting the saddle height and fore aft and then potentially the bar height in order for these uh, changes to take full effect. But I wanted to show you this because it is a really good example of what can happen. And it's a good illustration of somebody on cranks that are too long for them and what types of problems it can create. And for her, it created a, all this sort of higher level um, ankle and foot dysfunction. And that led to the main problems she has, which were she had some foot numbness and some knee pain and a little bit of saddle discomfort um, uh, while she would, you know, get over about an, uh, an hour or so of riding. So. That's all I have for this one. Thanks for hanging in there, everybody. If you have any questions, put them down in the, uh, in the comments below. Happy to answer them as I can, and I will see you all next time.